We're given parametric equations asked to find dx dt, dy dt, dy dx, and then we'll also evaluate the functions and the derivatives at t equals two, and then we'll also find the speed at t equals two. Notice how the graph is also provided with the orientation. Notice as t increases, the graph would be traced in this direction here. Let's begin by finding dx dt, and because x is already a function of t, we apply the basic power rule. So the derivative of x with respect to t would be equal to the derivative of t to the third, that would be three t to the second, minus the derivative of three t squared, so we'd have minus six t, plus the derivative of t, which would just be one. And then for dy dt, we'd have the derivative of t squared with respect to t, that'd be two t, minus two times the derivative of t, that'd just be minus two, the derivative of three would be zero. But to find dy dx, we have to apply the chain rule, and therefore dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. So dy dx is equal to, again, dy dt, which we just found, two t minus two, divided by dx dt, which is three t squared minus six t plus one. Now let's evaluate the functions and the derivatives at t equals two. For x of two, we substitute two for t in our equation for x, that give us two to the third minus three times two squared plus two. This would give us, what, eight minus twelve plus two, which would be negative two. Which means when t equals two, the x-coordinate on the coordinate plane would be negative two. And now for y of two, here's the function y, we'd have two squared minus two times two plus three. Well, this would be four minus four plus three, which is three. So now we know when t equals two, the point on the coordinate plane would be negative two comma three, or this point here. Now let's evaluate dx dt when t equals two. Again, dx dt was equal to three t squared minus six t plus one. So when t equals two, we'd have three times two squared minus six times two plus one. Well, this would be 12 minus 12 plus one or one. This tells us the change of x with respect to t. So when t equals two, or on this point on the coordinate plane, x is increasing at a rate of one unit per unit of time. Also notice this is positive, so x is increasing at this location, which hopefully should make sense. Notice how the point is moving toward the right when t equals two. And now for dy dt when t equals two, where dy dt equals two t minus two, we'd have two times two minus two, four minus two equals two which means y is increasing at a rate of two units per unit of time when t equals two. And because it's positive, y is increasing. Again, looking at this point on the coordinate plane, notice how the point would be moving upward from here, verifying y would be increasing. And then finally for dy dx when t equals two, remember dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt, we already evaluated these at t equals two. dy dt when t equals two is equal to two. dx dt when t equals two is equal to positive one. So dy dx equals two divided by one or two. Remember this would tell us the slope of the tangent line at this point on the coordinate plane. So if we sketch a tangent line at this point, the slope should be positive two. Let's take a look. Here's the graph of the tangent line. Notice how if we use this point of tangency and this point on the line, we would have to go up two units and right one unit, verifying the change of y is positive two, the change of x is positive one, verifying the slope of the tangent line is positive two. And now for the last part, let's find the speed at t equals two. So the speed at t equals two would be equal to the square root 
of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared, again, when t equals two. Well, we just found that dx dt is equal to positive one when t equals two, so this would be one squared, and dy dt when t equals two was equal to positive two, so this would be two squared, and therefore the speed at this point here on the coordinate plane with this orientation would be square root five units per unit of time. Whereas a decimal approximation, this would be approximately 2.2361 units per unit of time. I hope you found this explanation helpful.